explain before we uh, we imp we uh, design and uh, uh, and develop the uh, and deliver the uh, the ICF training for the uh, two, uh, the two days uh, ICF training we are using the logical model the aim of this log logical model which is guiding the uh, the uh, guiding us what we what resources import that we need to consider which is teaching we are reviewing the uh, the empirical lit literature and the clinical reasoning in pediatric physiotherapists as well as we review the literatures on the uh, icf training uh, in the with regard to the icf in surface training we are focusing into the material that uh, the materials that been used in uh, the ICF training, and uh, we are focusing into the facilitator role, which is the uh, the uh, trainer who is giving that training, uh, and the the presentation how we are going to implement that training, the assessment, uh, as we uh, as it is the longest longitudinal uh, study, so we are uh, examine using a questionnaire that focusing into pre and post BTT questionnaire. Uh, the questionnaire uh, for the BTT is focusing into the ICF knowledge, the uh, decision-making uh, process, and the attitude and belief of the therapist about the ICF model. Uh, after five months, we are assisted also the, uh, the parent perspectives, uh, and it is in two groups group that uh, five centers they are having the training and five centers they don't have the training and we are assisted them with regard the phase one the pre and post training the uh, we use the t-test uh, and we found that there is a significant difference between uh, in the uh, between the pre and the post group with regard the intention, the attitude, of the perceived behavioral control, as well as the, as well as the decision making behavior, while we didn't find any changes in the subjective norm, the pressure coming from others, and then on the correlation of the theory of bland behavior, cognitive construct, uh, there is a the uh, there is a significant. Uh, predictors, the intention, the attitude, uh, the attitude, the perceived behavior of control uh, was significantly uh, predict the intentions, while it is not predicting the behavior. Uh, when when uh, the linear regression, it's shown that the attitude, the perceived, uh, the perceived behavior of control was a, a predictor of the intentions before and after, while the subjective norm, the pressure coming from the others, was not a predictor of the intentions. In phase two, uh, two after five months, uh, the uh, t-test is shown that there is no changes in the uh, clinical examination on the object objectives and the clinical treatment plan. While the parent satisfaction was significant, Therefore, we did the correlation between the parent evaluation item and the child physiotherapy. We found that the objectives and the parent cooperation with the physiotherapy was significant between the two groups. The group who's having the ICF, uh, the group that the therapist is having ICF training. In the conclusion, the implication of education and training, the ICF, the implication of, uh, of practice, we find that we need the, uh, to teach the ICF model as a clinical reasoning tool, aiming to enhance the BTT ability to consider the ICF domain, then solely focus into the impairment as a physiotherapist focusing mainly. To, uh, to guide uh, the physiotherapist decision-making behavior when applying the environmental and the personal factors in physiotherapy practice for children with CP. While the, the implication for research uh, a further work is required to, to examine how health uh, care professionals employ the ICF for the clinical reasoning and just focus and only and not just only focusing into the complex coding system in the context of their practice. Thank you very much.
Any questions for Anand? Thank you so much, Anand. Appreciate that so much. Next is Kirsi Niema. Ni itimaki. Is that my is my Finnish correct? That's correct. Yeah, ni itimaki. I know in Finnish you must pronounce every every syllable separate. <laughs> She's going to chat to us about the ICF uh, spiral ICF board game. So Kirsi, welcome, and thank you so much for your presentation. Hello, my name is Kirsi Niittimäki and I'm from Finland. <laughs> I present to you Spiral Board Game, which is a practical tool for healthcare professionals. Um, the aim of Spiral Game is to increase client-centeredness and self-evaluation in rehabilitation goal setting based on ICF domains. Uh, spiral game includes spiral shaped game board and 24 question cards like that the game is played like any other board game you roll the dice and if you say get for example three you go three steps forward uh, and then you take a question card and ask the question During the game, each participant answers questions in their own turn and mark answers to the form. Uh, they evaluate, do I have difficulties or not? Or do I want to change for these? The reha rehabilitation goals are formulated from the answers given by participants during the game. Uh, we have developed uh, different question cards for psychiatric and young people with autism spectrum disorders during year 2015. Uh, Spiral game was played on six rehabilitation courses uh, and the uh, game was developed based on the experience gathered from the rehabilitation courses, uh, professionals and clients. Uh, during year 2017, Spiral Game was extended for new user groups. New picture supported questions were developed for SLI and aphasic clients. And also Spiral Method was piloted also in vocational rehabilitation groups. This is example for the picture support question card, problem solving. That girl thinks that, uh, what should I do now? <laughs> the rehabilitation groups where Spiral was played was compared to control groups where the goal setting process was carried out traditionally. Results. Healthcare professionals have been very interested in this new and user-friendly tool. Game showed new possibilities to use ICEF in daily practice and it also fun. The spiral can help the participants to recognize their strengths and limitations, increase their active particip participation, provide help to reha rehabilitation interventions and goal setting. And with this game, it was easier to open conversations and encourage participants to ev evaluate their own abilities and personal goals. This game is open access, and that's the web address. And uh, during this year, question cards are translated in English and Swedish also. And the project was financed by the Social Insurance Institution of Finland. Thank you. <laughs> Danke. <laughs> Any questions for Kirsi?
One other thing I know is that the social insurance company is called Kela. Kela. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something <That's great>. about... <laughs> Okay. Our next participant is uh, Karen de Bauer. Is Karen here? She's unable to attend. Okay, so so then the next one is um, Eduardo de Santana. You have a new surname now, Eduardo. It's so Cordaya Cordaira on here. Yeah. So Eduardo, where is your Eduardo is uh, from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and he will be chatting about the ICF multifunctional portal that they've developed. Um, Eduardo is uh, one of the educational advisors and educators. He's registered on the ICF education website. So if any of you are ICF educators or advisors, you can go to icfeducation.org and register yourself as an advisor or educator, and then people will be able to find you and perhaps make use of you if you have time. Eduardo, your turn. Thank you, Stefan. Good morning. So I will talk about um, a project. Uh, this is a prototype. We, in Portuguese language, we say classification international and not international classification. So the website is CIF and not ICF. You can get it right now if you want to. Um, I have been studying ICF for 14 years. And in 2013, I was working in a city for the government and with mortality, morbidity, financial resource, and I intend to use ICF with them. Then I have created the online course, and then I'm using um, that device in this website with other points to show you. As you can see, it's not a professional website, it's a prototype, and I have some partners that I'd like to share for everybody. And what I would like to show is uh, the social policy depends on statistical use. The statistical use of ICF depends on the clinical use, and the clinical use depends on the language, the ICF language. And the ICF language depends on education, because when we say ICF is a tool for education, a tool for statistical, a tool, okay, but it it depends one it depends one of other. Oh, it depends. Okay, you understood. Um, here I have five points to develop to turn the prototype into a um, professional site. A learning device, uh, a device to search categories, to encoding, to create indicators that it's really important, and to find ICF-related websites, journals, anywhere. And so there are prototypes I will show you. This one is the course, the online course. You can uh, access here, okay? That one is a nap, a nap from the council, the PT and OT council or from Brazil, uh, to search categories, not to encoding, okay? Only search categories you can get free. This is the prototype of the um, uh, encoding device, okay? And I would like to share with you two, um, an article and a book about how to get the data into tables, ICF data, and how to create 
functional health indicators. Here you can find some suggestions for how to do it. Sorry. Um, let me see if I forget. Okay. The project uh, must be what's the project? I will invite Brazilian universities to evaluate all of my apps. To evaluate, and uh, they need to answer a main question. Can the users learn ICF skills while they use those tools? We need to teach ICF for professionals, but if they use the, the, the ICF some, some way, will they learn? We have to learn before and then they use, or we have to make them use and then they will learn. That's the question. Oh, so the expectation. My expectation is I would like to have a friendly platform, uh, easy platform, and to, to be recognized as a facilitator of ICF education. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Obrigado. Any questions for Eduardo? Thank you so much, Eduardo. I really appreciate you coming all the way from the other side of the Atlantic. Um, it's a bit further than America, or the United States of America. Our next speaker is um, Jean Baptiste. Jean Baptiste is from, from Rwanda. Where's Jean Baptiste's PowerPoint? Jean Baptiste, are you finished with your PhD now, Jean Baptiste? He just finished his PhD on the <laughs> through the University of, of Cape Town. He's an ICF star in Africa. And uh, Jean Baptiste, welcome, and we, we're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, this is my name. I'm from Rwanda. I did my PhD in the University of Cape Town. I'm now a lecturer at the University of Rwanda in the physiotherapy department. Um, as he, he mentioned, ICF is not well known in our countries, especially in Rwanda. I think I'm <laughs> the first one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you some of the, my results in, on impact on of ICF in improving behavior uh, regarding interprofessional practice. It is a, a very small part of my PhD the, because it uh, involved developing tools to assess knowledge and uh, behavior and attitude. Uh, also, it involved a feasibility study before uh, I started main study. This was, it was randomized control trial uh, it is well documented that uh, good collaboration among professionals, health professionals can reduce medical errors or can assist in knowing or interpreting uh, health information, then improving patient outcome or care. The ICF was found to be a potential framework uh, to help health professionals providing common language then better collaboration. It is really amazing. Uh, the aim of my, this study was to, to determine whether this framework can assist in interprofessional collaboration. And then if it is done or used interprofessional collaboration can improve uh, practice, which we showed in the entry of patient record. Uh, it was done in Rwanda, specifically in the district hospitals. Uh, uh, four hospitals were selected, two in the experimental or intervention and two in control arm. The intervention was in service one day, ICF training uh, in the interprofessional collaborative practice and two control hospitals was only a short 
talk about ICF. The participants were medical doctors, nurses, physios, uh, psychology, I mean, clinical psychologists, mental uh, nurses, nutritionists, social workers. Uh, inpatient uh, records were also examined using a self-developed checklist. Uh, briefly, this is the result uh, of the patient records after at baseline two months, four months, and six months. Uh, this was done by post hot take, which indicated that at baseline, uh, there was no significant difference in scoring. But at, as it goes to four, two months, there is a very significant difference or in, uh, improvement in recording. The blue color is intervention, the red color is control. You see the confidence intervals between two groups. Uh, at two months, a uh, follow-up session was given, but at four months, it is, seems that there are some decrease or decline and goes to six months there is some decline which indicated that there is a need of retraining or refresher what are the uh, areas of improvement it was very amazing that the part of interprofessional collaboration was first to be uh, improved followed by environmental factors part and then participation and activity limitation. For the demographic information and other information related to health diagnosis, it was not well, uh, very improved because it was even higher at baseline. Uh, as a conclusion, it was shown that this introduction of ICF, as it involved in informed interprofessional collaboration, uh, it is very good uh, 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 framework to inform a biopsychosocial model, and this can be improve, can be used to improve healthcare delivery in Rwanda and other region. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Anybody else with a question for John Baptiste? Melissa. John Baptiste, thank you very much for your presentation. I was wondering, was a, uh, in when I do workshops, uh, after the workshop, uh, sometimes people come back to me and they say, um, well, a one day workshop or even a two day workshop is not sufficient. They need to have repeats or refreshment. Have you? Uh, Maybe after the study, have you experienced that as well? Can you speak in the mic? Okay. Uh, after, after. For what? Repeat the question. The question is uh, often <coughs> people say that one or two day workshop is not enough. Do they re delete, repeat workshops or longer workshops? Okay. Actually, uh, in the feasibility study, it was two days workshop and uh, it was planned, but it was found not feasible because of availability of medical staff. And then uh, it has shown a very great improvement. And we, we decided to use one, one day and to squeeze all content in one day, uh, at least to find people. But after, at the end of, uh, of uh, training or workshop, uh, I gave, I mean, training satisfaction questionnaires. In those questionnaires, they all emphasized on, uh, it was good, but it is needed, uh, there is a need to add more days and to be two days or why not three days? So I understand your question. And it is one day it was squeezing, was very quick, but it has shown a very great improvement. Thank you. Matilda. Do you think that people learn to work together? Meaning, 
Did people in the study continue to work in silos or did the training in ICF really help them to work together? Okay. Um, when, after two months, when I did a follow up, uh, I found in the experimental study or interventional uh, hospitals, they, they developed spirit of working together. But which I afraid that if the it shows some decline at six months. For today, I think there is a need of other refresher, other follow-up, other training within the institutions. Thank you. Thank you so much, John Baptiste. Yes, what we've learned. Our next speaker is Beatrix Algerem. Beatrix, let me just get your PowerPoint. There you go. She's going to speak to us about the development of high quality person centered care through the integration of ICF into health records. Thank Welcome. You very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to give me the possibility to present our innovation work. Um, it was also very interesting in the morning to hear to all the others. Um, I think everybody nation international wide be facing the same problems and we are doing the same things try to make healthcare and social care better and provide a high quality of care actually uh, this project i'm my name is beatrix algorem i am a physiotherapist and i did a master in public health and epidemiology and i worked on the, at the icf research branch uh, but I have also a focus on health promotion, actually, um, as a sports scientist. And uh, this project was financed from um, Binova, which is the Swedish Agency of Innovation, and uh, also from FAMNA, which is the Swedish Association of um, Non-Profit Health and Social Care Providers, as well as Alkit Communication, which was... Uh, was this IT company which we were working with, and my university, the Anschutzing Academy for Improvement of Health and Welfare, and where we integrated uh, the ICF in a health record, where we did this work was Breki uh, Diakonia on a unit uh, for person with uh, dementia. So the purpose was actually to develop a way of working to improve person-centered care, and. By the way, to integrate the ICF in a health record system. But the primary, primary aim was actually the way of working. I really would like to stress to build up a culture and attitudes uh, to, to uh, provide person-centered care. It's not only to provide a health record system, but it's the way of working, how you use uh, the information, the meaningful use of information. You know, in Sweden, we will become uh, the nation, the leading nation, uh, 2025 uh, in e-health, <laughs> international. So we are not sure if we will reach it. Actually, as, as I said, I'm from Germany, but um, we want to do it. And uh, there, there are several activities uh, to integrate the ICF in health records. Uh, we did it, this innovation project, by the means of an iterative process. We had many, many uh, learning sessions, seminars, uh, and uh, then each part went home and did their home lectures. Um, and uh, we had many reflections on what is uh, a person-centered way of working and uh, we identified by the social workers they called themselves also health pedagogues uh, what kind of information we need from the icf we have around 100 icf categories and it's not only on the uh, first level or second level they even get got deeper in it because they, that it's very important for example orientation functions if uh, you have still a function 
if you still can orient to uh, the room or uh, the time or if it's uh, to 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 locally if you need. Um, I did some interviews. I have um, the task to be the ICF expert, but also to be the interactive researcher. Um, the most, um, new results we did was flipped the ICF coin and we flipped the focus from problems to resources. And this was very, very important uh, to have uh, by the disease of dimension where you have so many problems. But still, as long as you, as the problem is not a total problem, still um, Yes. And what happens was that this salutogenic perspective helped the care team to focus on resources and to identify alternative strategies how to help them and uh, recognize uh, their own strategies, even if it's a progressive disease. And uh, the self-esteem of the residents increased. And we have some cases, cases where um, the residents could move home again from the uh, care unit and handle their life by themselves. Yes. So <laughs> we really, uh, and, and in the interviews of the social workers or health pedagogues, they also stressed, we thought that, the, we, uh, that we were person-centered, but actually we identified that this is so much more and values disappeared which they had and uh, they also recognized this importance of teamwork and it's not always their own competence to, to uh, um, examine and to uh, um, assess uh, some of these ICF categories but they really uh, recognize now we need some other experts here and uh, they they increased in their own professional knowledge and um, by the way to find these strategies also these alternative strategies and to really empower the residents so thank you very much i do not have any slides anymore. <laughs> Any questions? Catherine. Um, thank you. Very nice to just uh, focus on the positive aspect. I wonder if you developed uh, descriptors for the levels of resource. And this is actually the problem we have. And this is... Uh, Can you repeat? Uh, can you repeat the question? I was busy searching for the uh, okay. next presentation, so sorry. I'm a man, I can only focus on one thing. Uh, the question was uh, if we have uh, standardized how we assess the different uh, cutoffs, uh, the ICF qualifying dis descriptors. Yes, and we do not have. And uh, this is also a question I would li like to join with you and discuss with you because uh, we had the problem if it's not a problem or no resources, that's easy. If it's total, it's also easy. It might be also easy if, if it's mild and moderate, but this severe, this is a really uh, big span range. And there we have problems, especially with persons which have uh, progressive uh, disease and are quite bad. We can see improvements, but we cannot. Do problems, so we have not solved this problem. <laughs> Gente, eu vou ficar com esse fone que eu estou acompanhando uma reunião sobre si, o que está acontecendo lá. A question was in the study. Did you also consider um, capacity and performance? Actually, we focused on performance. Yes. 
any other question? Eduardo. No, I. Oh, uh, the question was if you do, if I educate um, the qualifiers in a different way, as I say, they are resources. Actually, I do not. Uh, it's the system which switch it. Uh, and in the meeting with the. Uh, with Change has both as bar markets a lot, and the cadeiras local are not on problems, but the professionals still assess problems, but they also assess if it's no problem, as it is a total resource. <laughs> the question is, how did you get this enormous brain, brain wave? Uh, <laughs> it was in one of our many um, reflection sessions and learning seminars. So. Thank you so much. One of the things that ICF also teaches that you just mentioned is reflective practice, and that is an enormous uh, cap competency of interprofessional collaborative practice also. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, Melissa, come forward. Jean Baptiste, where are you? Mm. There's one other question that somebody just mm. asked online, and that was if the people that you've trained, if they mm. also are known or have been trained in ICD or if they are using ICD also? You can just say yes or no. No, it's the answer. Okay. Good. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa will talk to you about uh, training the trainers program. Um, an approach doesn't have to be a tongue twister. That's why I didn't try the whole thing because it's a tongue twister. <laughs> But it's not much of a tongue twister uh, with my, our names, like <laughs> like Kiersey's. So I'm um, presenting you this poster on behalf of the whole ICF Research Branch training team that includes me, includes Monica Finger, Michaela Kirschnick, who's also here for the national conference, um, Sandra Kuz, who's currently teaching an ICF uh, mini course for the German uh, national uh, participants. Um, Roxanne Maritz, who's a new PhD with us, and Michaela Koenen, who's part of the organizational team, who will um, present this afternoon. Well, the title, um, an uh, ICF Train the Trainer, uh, an approach that doesn't have to be tongue twister. Basically, that means to train others to, tr to teach ICF doesn't have to be complicated. That's the main message. So the Train the Trainer Workshop um, was developed by, or our, the ICF Research Branch Train the Trainer Workshop was developed because we recognize uh, that there's an increased need for training others to train, to uh, teach the ICF. Because as trainers like Catherine and um, Deanna and Heidi and me, we cannot be everywhere in the world. So we have to help and empower other people who are participants of our trainings to teach other people. Yeah. So that's why we developed it. So we basically took our main workshop and expanded it to become a train the trainer workshop. So the overall aims of the train the trainer workshop are to deepen the participants knowledge about the ICF itself, because even if the the people who are participating in this training training workshop, workshops already have a basic idea of the ICF. They may have um, lack of knowledge in certain areas of the ICF, and that will help them to deepen their own knowledge. And that was my question to Jean Baptiste: How often does an ICF training need to be? And I think this will give them opportunity to deepen their knowledge. Um, and also to refine their training skills, because some people are excellent and experts in the ICF, but training their training skills and their presentation skills need a lot of assistance and support. We also provide um, a structured workshop um, and materials that they can use in their trainings. And it also provides them an opportunity for networking, because there, as we have heard this morning and we will ha hear this afternoon there's so many projects out there there's so many people doing great things and this is an opportunity for people to come together and exchange ideas and um, innovative um, concepts 
The ICF Train the Trainer workshop of the ICF Research Branch is designed as an interactive workshop. So there are exercises throughout the whole workshop in almost every module. And um, we feel that it's the principle for the Train the Trainer workshop is learning by doing, meaning the participants have to go through the whole training themselves to know how to best convey this information, the ICF concepts to other people, and also gives them an opportunity to practice through the exercises. So it's not just about hearing, um, but actually doing. The Train the Trainer workshop is um, comprises of lectures as well as individual and group exercises and is set up in modules. As you can see, I'm not going to go repeat it, but you can see that they're in the two-day um, workshop. There are different modules. The um, day one ha um, uh, covers the basics of the ICF and then day two are specific modules in different areas and we adjust this depending on the interests of this, the participants in for a particular workshop. Each model, um, uh, each module starts out with a slide that identifies what the participants should learn. So the trainers know what the participants should learn after completing this module. But it also has a slide that tells the potential trainers what they will be able to do after they complete this module. Um, there are also, in addition to the regular workshop uh, material, there's also um, slides on frequently asked questions. And we have these, we put these, these questions together through many years, over 10 years of teaching the ICF, and also um, and answers. And this is good for also for discussion, because sometimes not everybody agrees on the answer. So it was good also for discussion. As you can see here, how can similar body functions and activities and participation categories be differentiated? For example, urination functions and toileting. And a possible correct, I say in Genzifusin, um, I mean, um, what do you call these things? Um, these things here, uh, a possible answer. This is good for discussion. There are also um, slides on tips and tricks on teaching method methodology and training methodology, again, to address the training skills and presentation oh. skills of the potential trainers. We address topics such as workshop organization and logistics in a sp specifically designed trainer-trainer module. It goes over about two hours. Um, it comprises of lectures as well as an exercise. So we go through the organization, logistics, what they should consider. Um, we provide ICF self-learning resources they can use in their training and provide for their own participants. Of course, the teaching methodology is important, and it comprises an exercise, group exercise, that will um, ask participants to take one of the modules that they already went through, that they participated in themselves as a participant, and to adapt this module for a specific chosen audience. So each of these groups, we divide up the whole audience into groups and they choose their audience and present what they have done and adapted this module to their specific audience. Because we recognize that the importance of targeting and um, their specific audience by um, transferring the knowledge and changing their modules for their particular audience because it'll change depending on who is sitting in the room. Um, the ICF train the trainer workshop also recognizes the specific needs of our own participants in these workshops. So we also, we adapt our slides as well, either through the visualization, through different pictures, or different examples um, in the exercises. So it does take a little bit of effort, but I think we feel that it's important that people can identify with what they're learning and that they can pass this on to their own participants. And we also encourage the active sharing of information and knowledge. Um, and the ultimate goal is to make teaching and learning about the ISF more interesting and fun. We don't, we don't, no, none of us want to sit in a boring workshop the whole day. So that's why we have it interactive and we try to involve the people as much as possible. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions. Should I just, Matilde? Some qualifiers that set an environment not important, but then 
and they focus on what they really know and never sees everything. How do you seek to harmonize the use of the classification as tool set thing? Yeah. So the question was, how um, how do we enforce the um, the harmonized training to ensure that there's consistent conveying of the information of the ICF to others and whether or not how they are conveying it to others? Um, for me, it's a twofold answer. The, the first um, answer is that we don't. We can't. The only thing we do is we have an evaluation form to see what they can use in their own trainings. Um, but we, can, we don't do a follow-up how they do it. We did it in one project. It was a project with Romania a couple of years ago. It was a Swiss-Romanian project with motivation. And we actually, I did the training in Switzerland. And then um, some people came to us for another training. And then we went to Romania and watched them how they did the training. So what I did was, after each day of training, um, I did uh, like a debriefing with the trainers and said what went well, what didn't go well. I asked them what went well for them, what didn't they, what didn't go well, and then that was one way. But um, that was a specific project. But otherwise, it's too much for us because um, the ICF research branch does many other things like research, <laughs> and so ICF training is sort of like one one of our work um, work plan items in the in the German collaborating center. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you to all the uh, participants. Just one or two things. Remember, if you have ma education material, if the presenters and the rest of you, please go and upload that to icfeducation.org. ICF Register yourself as an advisor or an educator. And then if anybody would like to next year to host the fourth international symposium, you can talk to me or send me an email. We have lunch now, but may I ask, uh, up to now this morning, um, the African influence is very heavy here. We were in African time. Um, so in, in Africa, we have the time, and in Germany, you have the watches. So may I remind you that you're in Germany. We are back here at strictly, sharply, um, one o'clock. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat>